1 Thessalonians verse 23. Do you have it? Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Do, do you have it? I want everybody to have this verse because it's so, so important. Okay? Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be preserved, complete, without blame at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I will, I will pray for a minute for, to the Holy Spirit to help us to understand his word. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before your presence today, thanking you for your word. And we ask you to enlighten the eyes of our understanding, to understand your word and to apply in our lives. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, because from you comes every good thing. And we thank you for this day, for your teaching, for your word, for your presence among us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Here is describing that we have three parts. Here said that the God of peace himself sanctify. Who will sanctify us? God himself, right? Because he here said, now may the God of peace the Lord is a, a God of peace, is, a, is the prince of peace. He, he don't have in him hate. He is peace, his love. And the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, your spirit, your soul, and your body. We are a three-part being. You know, your spirit is the other you. That when we don't have the Lord, we are die. Uh, we, our spirit is dead, not dead, literally dead, but is dead to God's presence. Is um, dead means separation. We are separated from God. That means death, right? We are separated from the life of God, and when we receive the Lord, life come to our spirit, and now spiritually we are alive, right? Uh, everybody. You know, I'm trying to explain, do my best. Remember, English is my second, my, like my fourth language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're <yeah>, right. <laughs> my second language. I uh, try to justify myself. <laughs> but, you know, when we receive the Lord Christ, you know, our spirit is alive. And now our spirit receives everything that we need in this life. Because in the spirit is everything we need. The Bible says, uh, says that. But what do we need to be renewed? Our soul and our body. What is your soul? What your soul is? It's our mind, it's our emotions, and, an, uh, and our will. I will put an example like this phone. This phone represents my body because it's physical, right? The software of this phone, what it is, is my, my soul. Because if I have a software in this phone, this phone can work. Now this phone has a software and a body. Now this phone is ready to be used. But this phone won't be used if he doesn't have, you know, it's not charged with power. And what is that power that brings to life this phone? The spirit. You know, it's God. You know, it's, it's, it's exactly like this. You know? And many of us, we have our batteries really in, in red sometimes. <laughs> but we need to be fully charged, right? To be in fire. But sometimes things in life, because we download that wrong applications. Worriness, loneliness, you know, defeat, tiredness, discouragement. All these apps are here. Where, where are my apps? You know, apps that are <laughs> in my brain, right? And I am thinking, and the app took appears. 
you know, because it's comparable. What the, the thing, the feelings I am having is like a clicking in the in the app, and which manifest all the emotions that we have in the heart. What is your app in your mind? What is the storage that connect that app is to your heart? That like this app connect to the hard drive or the thing inside of the computer will connect to our to the you know to the the information it has is that exactly the same that we have in the heart. You know we have the app depression. I am so depressed. Click and go to the hard drive and all the emotions. Oh, I am so depressed. I want to die. I want a knife without. You know, it's not sharp to kill myself. <laughs> Just pretend I want to kill myself. I was thinking that before I was making jokes when we had people that we were depressed, that we were talking to each other and say, yes, I want to kill myself, but I want a knife, that it can, no, no sharp knife. I want just to pretend that I'm killing myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's exactly, you know, this phone, when I, 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 I am working on my phone, I see my brain here. I, I don't know how my brain works. My brain works with pictures, you know? And we have here, for example, discouragement. Oh, my app, that my favorite one, discouragement. I will make, you know, let's say my phone, this red is discouragement. I click, I, I feel discouraged, and every emotion is coming. You know, it's manifesting. No wonder we feel so bad because we are having the wrong apps in our, you know, in our computer, in our mind. And we need to replace those apps from the word of God. Amen? That is, 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 is really easy to understand with the, that example, you know, how our brain, our minds work, right? Our emotions. But the Lord wants you to know what you really have. And we will start the PowerPoint, sweetie. Oh, is there... If uh, Kathy, can you turn off the light, please? I will ask you to go to the book to the book of Corinthians one. Uh, Corinthians chapter two, verse twelve. Sorry that I couldn't translate. The, this is in Spanish. I have in English too, but I couldn't finish because I was busy. Here says for the ones don't speak English. <laughs> the ones who were merciful to me that I didn't translate this. This is a new man. We are a new man. Yes, your language. Amen. We are, the, the Bible we just read, we are a new creation, right? Who is a new creation? All of us, because we receive Christ, right? Now we are, is we, we have a new man inside of us. But it's trapped, doesn't manifest because it's in the spirit. When you and me, we came to the Lord, how many of us, we came to the Lord all desperate? Lord Jesus, help me. By faith, I see you. By faith, I believe you, right? We came to him before we were Christian. And, and, the, and we received the Lord Jesus by faith. But when we receive the Lord Jesus by faith, the Bible said, that we receive the spirit of God inside of us. Let's read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Do you have it? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. What is spirit we received? The spirit of, of God inside of us. You know, how many of us, we were like this, with our spirit separating from God. At the moment that we received Christ, our spirit received the life of the Lord, and now our spirit is alive. Amen? How many of us, our spirit is alive? Before, we didn't have knowledge that we have a spirit. We were just a person. But when we received Christ, our spirit received the life of Christ. Now we receive the spirit of God. And in the spirit of God, we receive 
ev freely everything that we need in the spirit of God. It's like uh, the Lord opened a mind, uh, let you know that in your spirit is a powerful mind with every riches and everything in your spirit. Amen. It's not everything that you receive from the Lord is not in heaven. It's in your spirit, in my spirit, because now it's alive. But it's trapped. What is preventing to manifest the things we receive from the Lord? Our mind, the bad ap applications. These things are blocking, not allowing, you know, to, to manifest the things that we have from the Lord are blocking the way behaviors, patterns in our lives, the way we think, you know, all this suppressing, all those things to manifest. But when we remove those apps, those, the Bible called strongholds, will flow what we have in our spirit. And we will see clearly what God has for us. What God wants for, want for us. Your gifts. You will see your gifts more clearly. You will see your calling. Because how many of us we ask, Lord, I don't know why, what you want me to do in your kingdom. How many of us we are lost? We don't know. It's because our thoughts, our behaviors are blocking from the, spirit, the information that we have in the spirit to be manifested. Amen? How many of us we are... Uh, uh, we agree with that. What the Lord gave us when we received the spirit of Christ. I will ask you to go to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Ephesians. This is powerful. I love it. I love it because, you know, I, 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 I was talking Thursday. I wish somebody told me this 17 years ago. My life will be different. Now I will be flying. No, I'm just kidding, you know. <laughs> like an angel. Well, but the Lord has his ways and his time always is perfect, right? We, want, we expect things from God in our time, right now. Lord, I want this now. But you know what the Lord said? That is immediate gratification. And I'm not an enabler to give you what you want right now. <laughs> you know? Because how many of us, we like immediate gratification. We want something. Right? But when we want that, you know, and we have everything immediately, we don't have persistence, we don't have perseverance, we don't have endurance. And God wants us to be strong. God wants us to be, to endure situations. God wants us to be stable, solid. For the reason the Bible calls us oaks of righteousness. Do you know how many years takes a oak to grow I was reading takes like a 200 years you know and means if the Lord is calling us oaks of righteousness means that our growth will be slowly but surely because the Lord is is giving us a strength endurance patience my husband said since he got he married me, he learned the fruit of the spirit, long suffering. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he said always, but I take it in a nice way, right? <laughs> because he's becoming an oak of righteousness. <laughs> Amen. For Ephesians one three, let's go. Do you have it? Ben, one three said, "Blessed be the the Father, the the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us past tense, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. You know the Lord. You came from the Lord before you came. But let, let's let's read for uh, verse." Um, Let's, let's read verse 4 to have a um, clear understanding. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we will be holy and blameless before him in love. He predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the 
a kind intention of his will. Here said that we were chose before the foundation of the world. What does that mean? I will go back to this to this slide. I want you to just pay attention here for a minute. You know, this you the Bible said you are spirit, soul and body. The soul is not here, but is that how function your mind and your heart. You know, your your spirit, soul and body be be kept uh, irreprehensible, said the Lord, pure. Now, b before we came to this world with a human body, we were in the Lord Jesus. We were in heaven. Here said, uh, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, we were in heaven with the Lord. Our spirit was in heaven with the Lord. All our spirits work with the Lord because he took us from him. A piece, it's like a, he is a huge lake of water, a, a, a sea, and he took a drop of water. That is you and me. You know, and we were with him before we, we were created physically. The Lord said, okay, Amy, Kathy, other Kathy, Doreen, what is your name? Marvin, and Anthony. Scott, Caleb, me, you know, every drop from my heart, from my spirit, I take a piece of me and I will put a name. It will be you before the foundation of the world. We came from him. He, he said he chose us before the foundation of the world. Your spirit came from the Lord. My spirit came from the Lord and he put us name. And he said, at this time you will be born. And I will give you a fleshly body to live in the world. We existed before the foundation. Of, that means you are really, really old. <laughs> yes. You know, because our spirit came from the Lord, right? Now, because of sin, our spirit was dead, was separated from God because of sin. But when we receive Christ, our spirit received again the life of the Lord. And in the spirit, we receive everything we need. Because here said, blessed be the, the, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. That means your spirit has every spiritual blessing. You don't need to ask from God, Lord, give me this blessing. No, it's in your spirit that is waiting to be manifested, right? And who, when you will receive the benefits of the, what you have in your spirit, when you decide to change your mind, to renew your mind, remove those apps, change your heart, and all that we have in your spirit will be manifested, Right? 1 Corinthians 1, chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. I will make you read the scriptures today, and you will be all smart when you live here. <laughs> Amen. 1 Corinthians 1, verse 4 to, to 5. I, I, th I love you guys because you have patience with me. Okay. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Do you have it? I thank my God always concerning for you, for the grace of God which was given to you in Christ Jesus, that in everything you were enriched in him, in all speech and all knowledge. This is really powerful. When you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible said that in your spirit you will you you were enriched in all the speech and all knowledge. That means your spirit has everything, all knowledge. And you say, but I don't think so. Sometimes I don't remember even my name. It's because our minds are black with the wrong information. But when we remove those strongholds, all those things from our minds, we will manifest all the knowledge that we have in our spirit will come to manifest. 
No wonder when people are used by the Lord with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you are amazed how the gifts flows through the person, right? Who saw people with the gifts of the Holy Spirit flowing through them? It's amazing. But it comes from the person. No, it comes from the spirit of the person. Because all that riches, all that knowledge is in the spirit of the Lord. That is, is inside of our spirit. Right? We are the house of the spirit of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 2.6 says that. Let, let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. It's just right there. Uh, verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Can you believe it? You have the mind of Christ. Who say amen? I have the mind of Christ, at least by faith, right? <laughs> the Bible said you have the mind of Christ. And you say, I don't think so. I'm still thinking in my carnal ways. But the Bible said we have the mind of Christ. What else we have? Remember, we have the mind of Christ, right? One, we have a new heart and a new spirit. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. When you have it, can you say amen? Ezekiel chapter 36, 26. Do you have it? Uh, chapter 36, Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. Yeah, 36. I want you to really read it. Moreover, I will give you a new heart. And put a new spirit within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. How many of us, we have our hearts hardened for things that happen to us? Right? And the Lord said he will give us a new heart. A fleshly heart. A, 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 and he will give us a new spirit. It's Two things so far, or three things that the Lord will give us. The mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. We have a new spirit. We have a new heart. Let's go to First John chapter 2. It's another thing that the Lord gave us. He gave us many things, but he is kind of specifying what, you know, we really need to know now. First John chapter 2, verse 20. Do you have it? First John, verse 2, um, chapter 2, verse 20. Chapter 2, first John, chapter 2, verse 20. But you have the anointing from the Holy One, and you all know. The anointing means the empowerment of the Lord. The power, the, the glory, the power of the Lord that he gave us, the authority through, is manifest. This, this power is manifested through the authority, the power that comes from the Lord. We have all these things. You know, you are a new man. You are a new man because you have your spirit is alive. The Lord gave you the mind of Christ. Now you will be able to think like the Lord. You have a new heart. The Lord give you, you know, a heart, a heart that is sensitive. And the Lord will give you the anointing, the power to work for the Lord, to be a blessing to another people. You know, how many of us, we want to really have, it's not working this how, how many of us, we want to have the mind of Christ, a soft heart, and the anointing, the authority of the Lord? You know, it's just I want to, oh, it's, it's here. You know, the mind of Christ, the enlightenment. How many of us, we really want to have those things? 
you know, or man, we have it already in our spirit to manifest it, to think like God think, right? All of us we need, but we need to remove from us things that are are uh, are blocking this to happen. The Bible said in First Peter four seventeen, don't, don't go there. Said as Jesus is, you are in this world. You know, as Jesus is. You are in this world. If you want to read that, it's in First Peter four seventeen. You know, Jesus and us, we are the sec- exactly the same thing because we receive the spirit of Christ. How many of us, we know that the spirit of Christ is the spirit of Jesus, right, inside of us. And the Bible said that we have the anointing of the Lord. We already uh, talk about it. Now, this is the, my favorite picture. You know, this is your new man, your spirit is alive. You have the mind of Christ. But in life, you build up, you and me, we build up strong. This is the soul. It's where the apps are. You know, and the Bible said that we have strongholds. Strongholds symbolize something really strong, really hard to break, right? The Bible calls these strongholds. Let's go to Second Corinthians chapter 10. Where the Bible talks about the strongholds. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. Do you have it? Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. Yeah. Here said, For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortress, fortresses. We are destroying specul- speculations and every lofty thing rise up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. This is tr- these fortresses, these strongholds are preventing us to know the things of God that is in our spirit, those things from God, the knowledge, the wisdom, the gifts are in the spirit. But these strongholds that we learn in the world, patterns, behaviors, way the way we think. I don't have faith to do this because we have a lot of unbelief. How many of us, we are dealing with unbelief in some areas of our lives, right? We don't believe easy. Why? Because you were disappointed before in the world. People betray you, disappoint you, they lie to you, they cheat on you. And what you unconsciously were building up strongholds, thoughts of unbelief, doubt, right? You don't want to trust people because for the things we went in the, in the world. Now, when we talk about faith, faith that is here doesn't go through because We have a wall of unbelief. But the Bible said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but powerful to destroy these strongholds. When you said, I have unbelief, and I don't want to have this unbelief. I want to believe in God. I will apply the word of God. And you said, Lord Jesus, I destroy. I I, I come in disagreement with this unbelief. I destroy this stronghold. In Jesus' name. When you declare that word, that stronghold is destroyed. Did you saw that the, the picture? When uh, you know, let's pay attention to here. This is the word of unbelief. And you are thinking, Lord, I cannot believe. But you use the word. Lord, I want to, I want to believe. And I declare that the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but powerful for the destruction of the fortresses or strongholds. And I destroy this stronghold of unbelief in my mind, you know, because here said our weapons are not, uh, our warfare is not carnal, but powerful to destroy these strongholds. You just destroy the stronghold of unbelief. And now because you destroy the stronghold of unbelief, the faith that is here, what happened? Will go into your mind. You know, will freely will go to your mind. It's the app. This is the app of the Lord, right? That clicking this faith 
and good, you understand the faith. Right? I try to, my best to do so clear for everybody to, <laughs> to have it, right? Uh, and I think, I, and I ask you, who is the one who needs to work in, in the destruction of these strongholds, these patterns? Us. You know? If we live a defeated life in some areas, in some areas we can be so successful, but in some areas we're still struggling. Huh? Me. You know, some areas. But what I need to do is destroy those strongholds, you know, like we did. And put the word of God there, and my brain will understand. Because your brain is a fine machine. It's a powerful machine. You know, I, my husband knows that when he says something that he don't need to say, I make sure that he knows in a nice way. <laughs> in a nice way. Because the other day he was telling me, oh, but you have a problem. And he said, no, 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 I don't have a problem. <laughs> Honey, that you are, you are bringing chaos to my brain. I don't have a problem. But actually it's like that. You know, because when you say, I have a problem, your brain, your, your brain is receiving the information that came from your, mind, you, from your mouth. And it's recording in the brain. And it's how we build up a strong Holes. This wall is built. Is, these walls are built up from your words and your thoughts. Oh, I won't confess that I am defeated, but you're thinking, "Oh, I am so defeated. I am so. Oh my God, I am so bad." And you are believing, and you are building up that stronghold. Exactly. Proverbs says that. As the yeah, exactly how the the man thinks, so is he. You know. You are, you are the product of your thinking and your speaking. Because your words has power. Your thought, uh, I'm sorry, your, your words has power and your, ha your words has creative power. Why the enemy hate you? Why the enemy want to kill you with laser, disappear you? Why the enemy wants to do that? Because we are the, the image of God. We have, we have the power to create with our words, with our thoughts. We are, we are able to create. The enemy cannot create. What he, do is, what he does is use people to create ca uh, pa uh, death, chaos, because he cannot create nothing. He was defeated in the cross of Calvary. He was defeated. But he said, okay, now I am you know, he's already condemned. He has sentences. Yeah, he, he's just waiting for the moment to be in prison. But he is already, has the, he uh, was uh, convicted. Is the word convicted? Right? I need to see more law and order to learn those terms. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm funny today, guys. <laughs> 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 All over the place. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> that's funny. But he is using people to, to, uh, uh, to provoke chaos because the enemy said men has the power to create with their mouth, with their words, and with their thoughts. You know, I, and I will use men. For that reason, the Bible said that the enemy sent you darts. You know, you are fine today. Oh, thank you, Lord. I was able to rest. Today I will have a beautiful day. And a dart comes from the enemy. You know, oh. You can change this area, and you receive the thought, and you think it's your thought, and by the enemy, and you say, oh, yeah, that's true. I cannot change. And your whole day is ruined because of this thought that you receive from the enemy. Oh, you won't be able to overcome this problem. And you, yeah, that's right. And you know what is showing off? This stronghold. And no, I won't be able to overcome this. I won't be able to do this. You know, you feel defeated. Because you are dwelling in this realm, in the, the, in the realm of the soul, in the realm of the impossibility, in the realm that you build up all your life through your thoughts and through your words, right? That we, we created. And people, too, when you, our parents tell us, oh, you are, you are a nightmare, you are a sloppy person, you are this, you are that. We are receiving that information, and all those things are going to our subconscious mind, and it goes to our heart, and our heart, no wonder, is like a stone, right? 
because we receive those those words from people that hurts our feelings and our uh, our feel, our heart becomes harder and harder because we we are defensive makes sense what we are talking about you know and it's because the enemy is the one who hates us, who will create the environment for us to fail. For that reason, we need to leave, run from the soulless realm. We need to go to the spirit realm in the spirit. Because if you live in the spirit, the Bible said you can do everything through Christ who strengthens you. If you live from, from the spirit, I want to live from the spirit. You know? I want to demolish all these strongholds. I'm just showing you the verse. Second Corinthians 10 said that, that, the power, that, that our weapons are powerful to destroy these strongholds. Right? And we can do it. And when we do it, we renew our minds. And after, we understand God's way. For that reason, the Bible said it's so, it's so powerful this, that the Lord will enlighten the eyes of our understanding. Let's go to for Ephesians chapter 1. I love to teach this. Oh my God, I am really enjoying this. I hope you too. Chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. Do we have it? Verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation of the knowledge of him. You know, the Lord wants want to give us a spirit of wisdom, of revelation of the knowledge of him. What Paul said to, this, uh, to the Ephesians, I pray that the, the eyes of your heart might be enlightened. The, uh, the heart means the spirit. The eyes of your spirit will be enlightened. When we, we destroy strongholds, you know, we understand God, you know, is remove this area that is blocking your faith or understand something from God. Now your eyes of your, you know, understanding are enlightened. Right? And you can understand the things of God. For that reason, many people think that we are crazy. When we jump, we pray, we, you know, they, because they don't understand the spiritual things. The Bible said that the spiritual things for people is craziness because their, the eyes of their understanding is, is closed, is darkened, you know, it has so much strongholds that they don't see what we see. They don't want to see, they don't want to change. But the Lord want us to the eyes of our understanding, we enlighten it so, so that we will know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. This is so powerful. If the eyes of your understanding is enlightened, you can see the richness, the calling, the hope that the Lord called you. This uh, uh, and says that that we inherit in those riches is in our spirit, is in us. We are a mind full of treasures, but it's blocked for the soul. When you break, how, how many of us we want to have that, those diamonds? You know? And after the Lord will shape you because you know that the diamond is like a, a, a look like a coal. Right? In the beginning. And they pass you through fire. And after you shine so beautifully. You know, we need to go through fire. Patience, long suffering, endurance. But we are a society that is immediate gratification. I want things now. Sorry. The kingdom of God doesn't work that way. Trust me. I tested that so many times. I tried shortcuts. Didn't work. You know, that doesn't work because the Lord is building in me and you an oak of righteousness. The Lord take his time. 
He said, you know, you get nervous. You, you are threatening me that you will go back to the world. You can do whatever you want. But I don't, suf I don't suffer from codependency. You know, I don't have a nervo nervous break breakdown because you are going back to the world. That Lord said, I love you so much that I will still, Jesus is still praying for you in heaven for you to come back to me. But you need to learn my way because my way is the perfect way that will build you up to become a better you. And it, Oh, it's what I am talking about. He he will let you. He will let us go, but Jesus is interceding for us. You know, He's the the Lord. For that reason, Jesus died for us because when He went to heaven, He is interceding for us to come back to the Father, right? And when we come back to the Father, you know, we go to the world and we see nothing is good. We will come back to the Lord through the prayers of the Lord Jesus, through the mercy of the Lord. Amen? Let's continue. How many of us, we have patterns, thoughts that are still there that are preventing us to know more from the Lord, to flow in the, in the Spirit? Many of us, right? And our heart is hard in many ways. But the Bible said that the blood of Jesus will help us to remove that hardness from the heart, the blood of Jesus, you know? And when you remove from th your, the, the hardness of your heart, you know, you will be more sensitive to God's word, to God's ways. We will be more sensitive to people. How many of us, because we were hurt, we are so desensitized that we don't see another people that are hurting too? Right? Because we are desensitized. The Lord wants us to be sensitive, to be merciful. Amen? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 6. Actually, I think it's it's not here. Uh, no, it's, I am. It's the rumbers. Uh, I will keep going here. I think I have the. Oh, uh, that was the last part that I didn't mention. When the Lord Jesus, I would like you to pay attention here. When the Lord Jesus cleanses your heart. You know, through the blood of Jesus, uh, you know, we remove the hardness of the heart. It's easy for us to receive the revelation of the Lord. When you, when you come to church and you said, I have faith, but that faith is just a mental statement, right? How many of us, we believe that we have faith, but truly, truly, we have faith. We don't have faith in many areas. If you really analyze yourself, we don't have faith. You know, but when we de demolish the strongholds, you know, the faith will come to our hearts as a conviction. And we will have conviction. Right? For that reason, I was showing this. When the, the blood of Jesus is in your heart, cleansing your heart, and you meditate in God's word, and now you, you're, you're, the eyes of your understanding are enlightened, and you understand God's ways, you know, the revelation comes to your heart. And now faith is a conviction. It's not just a mental statement. It's a conviction. Nobody can move you what, from what you believe because it's a conviction. But that comes through renewing our mind and cleansing our hearts. Amen? There's the transformation and sanctification. I will, uh, we will read in about that. You know, I want to... Uh, Let's go here. This uh, Romans 12, 1. The Lord wants us to constantly renew our minds. How many of us, we, we need to renew our minds? It's a, di a daily homework. If we want to have the mind of Christ manifested, we need to renew our minds. Romans chapter 12.
Do you have it? Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do you have it? Amen. And do not be conformed to this world, to the way of these worlds, right? But be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what, what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Amen? How many of us, we want to renew our minds? We don't need to follow the patterns of people. We are not followers. You know, we are disciples. And a disciple is a leader. If we thought, oh, every, everybody is uh, getting the vaccination because, you know, it's the, the, the winter time. All of us, let's go to get the vaccination. I don't think so. Because everybody's running, I, won't, I, don't, I don't need to run. I, I, don't, I need to have a critical mind. That is, this is good for me or not? You know, I'm touching some, some subject, touchy subjects, but, you know, it's just, let's say, oh, you know, um, we will be, we, we will be at, attacked by ISIS here in California, and everybody's panicking. Wait a second. I will ask God if that is true. If he is true, he will speak to me into my heart to prevent me to that. But if not, I need to be still and I need to be calm. I don't need to follow. I am not a follower. Yes. I don't need to. I am not a follower. I am an eagle. I fly by myself. The Bible says that we are eagles. You know? We, we are leaders. We are disciples. 